Hi, this is Sabrina, and I'm going over the signs and symptoms of COPD in relationship to the history and physical aspect of our examination. I'll be doing a quick overview of what COPD is, key history questions to ask your patients, chief complaints that your patients will have, signs and symptoms that you can just observe by sitting there and watching your patient, and treatment, diagnosis, and how you would treat them. So on the right here is the picture of the United States in an old survey from 1999 to 2006. Even though it's old, it shows us that COPD has a high prevalence in the United States, meaning that this is definitely something that we'll be seeing on office visits. What is COPD? COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's a common respiratory condition involving the airways and it's characterized by its airflow limitation. It affects more than 5% of the population and it's associated with a high morbidity and mortality. It is the third ranked cause of death in the U.S., killing more than 120,000 individuals each year. So COPD refers to a group of lung diseases that block airflow and make breathing difficult. Emphysema and chronic bronchitis are the two most common conditions that make this up. Chronic bronchitis is an inflammation of the lining of the bronchial tubes, which are carrying air to and from your lungs. These bronchial tubes get inflamed and they make mucus that can narrow or block the airways, making it hard for these patients to breathe. Emphysema occurs when the air sacs, known as the alveoli, at the end of your small air passages in the lungs are gradually destroyed. In a healthy person, these tiny air sacs, bronchioles, in the lungs are like balloons. As you breathe in and out, they get bigger and smaller to move air through your lungs. But with emphysema, these air sacs are damaged and they lose their stretch. Therefore, less air can get in and out of the lungs. Damage to your lungs from COPD can't be reversed, but treatment can help control symptoms and man minimize further damage. So here you can see a healthy lung at the top of the screen with the alveoli big and stretched out, moving as the air flows through. But at the bottom are lungs with COPD. There's mucus with chronic bronchitis, and the alveoli are, have stretched out, and the walls are damaged between them, so they become fewer, larger alveoli. The most important risk factor for COPD is cigarette smoking. We need to ask our patients the amount and duration of how long they've smoked, and that can contribute to the disease severity. So a key step in the evaluation of patients with suspected COPD is to a certain the number of pack years smoked. The majority of patients with COPD have a history of cigarette smoking. It's useful to ask the age of starting and the age of quitting as many patients may underestimate the number of years they've smoked. With enough smoking, almost all smokers will de develop measurably reduced lung function. COPD is almost always caused by smoking. Over time, breathing tobacco smoke irritates the airways and destroys the stretch fibers in the lungs. Other things that put our patients at risk include breathing chemical fumes, dust, or air pollution over a long period of time. Secondhand smoke also increases our patients' risks. It usually takes many years for the lung to damage to start causing symptoms, so COPD is most common in people older than 60. Patients who have an extremely sedimentary lifestyle but few complaints require a careful questioning to elicit a history that is suggestive of COPD. Some patients unknowingly avoid exertional dyspnea by shifting their expectations and limiting their activity. They may be unaware of the extent of their limitations or that their limitations are due to respiratory symptoms, although they may complain of fatigue. Patients who present with respiratory symptoms generally complain of dyspnea and chronic cough. The dyspnea may initially be noticed only upon exertion. Eventually, it becomes noticeable with progressively less exertion or even at rest. The chronic cough is characterized by the insidious onset of sputum production, which occurs early in the morning initially, 
but may progress to occur throughout the day. The daily volume rarely exceeds 60 milliliters. The sputum is usually mucoid but becomes prelent upon exacer exacerbation. Patients who present with episodes of increased cough, prelent sputum, wheezing, and dyspnea that occur intermittently with or without fever. Diagnosis can be problematic in such patients. The combination of wheezing plus dyspnea may lead to an incorrect diagnosis of asthma. Other illnesses also have a similar manifestation and can cause us to indirectly diagnose a COPD exacerbation, such as heart failure, bronchiectasis, and bronchiolitis. So we just need to be aware of this in the back of our mind. Early in the disease, the physical examination may be normal or may show prolonged expiration or wheezes on forced exhalation. As the severity of the airway obstruction increases, physical examination may reveal hyperinflation, decreased breath sounds, wheezes, crackles at the lung base, and or distant heart sounds. Features of severe disease include an increased AP diameter of the chest, also called barrel-shaped, and a depressed diaphragm with limited movement based on chest percussions. Patients with end-stage COPD may adopt positions that relieve dyspnea, such as leaning forward with arms outstretched and weight supported on the palms or elbows. This posture may be evident during the examination or may suggest be suggested by the presence of calluses or swollen bursae on the extensor surfaces of the forearms. Other physical examination findings include the use of excess Accessory respiratory muscles of the neck and shoulder girdle, expiration through pursed lips, retraction of the lower inner spaces during inspiration, known as Hoover sign, cyanosis, asterixis due to severe hypercampnia, and an enlarged tender liver due to right heart failure. Neck vein distension may also be observed because of increased intrathoracic pressure, especially during expiration. You can also notice yellow nicotine stains on the fingers, which is a clue of ongoing cigarette smoking. A pink puffer is a person where emphysema is the primary underlying pathology. As you recall, emphysema results from destruction of the airways distal to the terminal bronchial, which also includes the gradual destruction of the pulmonary capillary bed and thus decreased inability to oxygenate the blood. So, not only is there less surface area for gas exchange, there is also less vascular bed for gas exchange, but less ventilation perfusion mismatch than blue bloaters. The body then has to compensate by hyperventilation, also known as the puffer part. Their arterial blood gases, ABGs, actually are relatively normal because of this compensatory hyperventilation. Eventually, because of the low cardiac output, people afflicted with this disease develop muscle wasting and weight loss. They actually have less hypoxemia compared to blue bloaters and appear to have a pink complexion, hence giving the name pink puffer. Some of the pink appearance may be due to the work, the use of the neck and chest muscles that these folks put into just breathing. A blue bloater, as you see here, is a person where the primary underlying lung pathology is chronic bronchitis. This is caused by an excessive mu mucus production with airway obstruction, resulting with hyperplasia of mucus-producing glands, goblet cell metaplasia, and chronic inflammation around the bronchi. Unlike emphysema, the pulmonary capillary bed is undamaged. Instead, the body responds to the increased obstruction by decreasing ventilation and increasing cardiac output. There is a dreadful ventilation to perfusion mismatch, leading to hypoxemia and polycythemia. In addition, they also have decreased carbon dioxide retention, which is called hypercapnia. Because of this increasing obstruction, their residual lung volume gradually increases, the bloating part. They are hypoxemic, which makes them cyanotic because they eventually have worse hypoxemia than pink puffers, and this manifests as bluish lists and faces, which is the blue part. 
So testing for COPD would do pulmonary function test spirometry, um, imaging, and arterial blood gases, which may be normal. So this is the sign symptoms of COPD.